Hey everyone, and welcome to the very first session of Always On CX and EX, where we talk about the latest industry trends and everything that's going on within customer experience, employee experience, and everything in between. Today, I'm joined by Giddy Adlerberg, one of my good friends and colleagues over in Israel. Giddy, how are you today? Very good, Josh. Happy to do this. Good. It's good to see you. So Giddy is one of our experts on the contact center here at Audio Codes, um, specifically focused on voice AI and VOCA. Um, so today, what we're going to talk about is diving a little bit deeper into Microsoft Teams, where Microsoft Teams voice ends and where the contact center begins. There's been such a large growth of Microsoft Teams in recent years, and with that a significant growth in companies migrating uh, to Teams voice as well. What are some of your favorite features on Teams Voice and, you know, maybe what's a feature that most people don't know about? Right. So, I mean, obviously we're here to talk about, you know, customer experience, employee experience. So when we, when we talk about these things, obviously we can't ignore what's, you know, what's going on with uh, Microsoft Teams and namely uh, what's going on with Microsoft Teams uh, Voice. Um, you know, if, if a few years ago, something like Microsoft Teams was considered kind of a nice to have. Today, I think, you know, companies out there really understand that it's, it's, it's much more than that. It's actually a must have if you want to achieve, you know, proper business continuity um, with, with everything that's going on. Um, you know, the power of Teams in being able to unify things like chat, messaging, um, voice communications, video communications, file sharing, all in this one place that's always with you. Um, it's, it, it, it's, it's very powerful for, you know, any business process that's going on, whether it's an employee internal process or a customer uh, related process. And when you think about it, you know, Microsoft has built this really kind of very impressive uh, ecosystem. Uh, around, around, you know, with, with teams included. So I like to refer to it as kind of the triangle of, you know, you have Azure for everything AI and compute. And, you know, uh, AI has is, is been around for quite a while, but these days with everything that's going on with ChatGPT, OpenAI, and the Microsoft relationship, of course, that's, that's you know, already playing and going to, to serve a huge, uh, role in, in, in the Azure AI capabilities. With that, you've got dynamics to aggregate data, whether it's customer data or internal employee data. And then you have Microsoft Teams for, for just the communication, the collaboration. When you add those three kind of endpoints together, you get a very powerful ecosystem that is very strong today, but will become even more powerful as we move on uh, driving, you know, pretty much any business process for 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 any company that's that's out there. Uh, for me, one of the one of the best features on Teams, and I think it gets uh, overlooked quite quite a lot, is just how easy it is to bring anyone you want into into a meeting, right? So, I mean, I can be in my car stuck in a traffic jam, uh, but take place on on a conference call with like twenty something people there. And if I want to bring someone in, I'm just literally a click of a button away uh, from doing that, you know, with, with things like CarPlay integration and stuff like that. So it's just so easy um, to, to, to have all this kind of on-the-go communication. When you think about it from a, a service workflow perspective, from a customer experience perspective, and we'll talk about that more, um, it, it also has great benefits in that sense because... You know, whenever you have, uh, whenever an agent has a call with a customer and they want to bring like a product product expert into into that call and so on, with with an infrastructure like Teams, it, it becomes just so easy to do, right? So uh, one piece of Microsoft Teams that I think often gets kind of overlooked is the, the mobile availability of Microsoft Teams, right? Because, I mean. Literally everything you can do from your desktop, you can also do on, on the Teams mobile app. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very proud to always say that there's literally nothing that I can, cannot do that's work-related 
from my mobile, um, you know, from, from basic calls to, um, you know, loading up a presentation, editing a document. You can do all of that through, through Teams Mobile. And, you know, for me, it's, it's kind of a lifesaver. It also means that, you know, I get to be responsive. No, no matter where, where I am, I have the entire org uh, kind of under my fingertips. So, so that's, that's a great Teams functionality that I think so many people can, can benefit from. Yeah, I get the added benefit of being able to collab with you and uh, always having quick responses, um, and it makes the uh, you know it makes work uh, a lot more productive and easier. And um, you know, it's it's fun to work with you. We do the voice memos on a pretty regularly regular basis. Allows us to kind of communicate more asynchronously, and we're, since we're in very different time zones, and you know, my day kind of starts when yours ends, and uh, but it allows us to continue. Uh, the, continue the communication. Okay, so obviously we know that many different companies have many different requirements when it comes to the contact center. Um, you know, when should a company consider using Microsoft Teams as their contact center? Right, so I mean, Teams Teams does a great job at, at kind of streamlining calls and providing it calls inside the company and kind of providing a modern uh, way in, I would call it, for, for callers, you know, that are dialing into to a company's uh, main line. Uh, if this company needs just, you know, kind of like the basic IVR, you know, routing a call to, you know, just a handful of destinations or maybe organizing the callers in, in like a basic call queue, uh, the native team's uh, capabilities will do a great job around that. Typically, that's the, those, you know, that set of capabilities is great for, let's say, a small office scenario or a scenario of like a global company that has a lot of kind of back offices, uh, you know, spread across the, across the world. Um, offices that don't really uh, front customers, uh, but just, you know, are there, um, you know, um, handling internal communication and, you know, obviously you need a way in, uh, callers need a way in to reach those offices. And for that, the team's auto attendant, the team's call queue uh, definitely does a great job. Okay. So it sounds like a lot of those features already built into Microsoft Teams contact center experience is good for more of those smaller teams or back offices, but where do you see Microsoft Teams contact center capabilities ending? Right. So I think the right way to look at it is kind of like how much do you care about the quality of, of the service delivered on that, you know, on that um, way in, as we called it, to, to your company? I mean that, you know, obviously when you care enough about the service level, the first thing you're going to want to do is just have eyes on what's going on uh, in your uh, IVR, in your call queues. Um, just to give a few examples, we want to typically we want to know um, how long are callers spending uh, on the IVR. Do callers have the right, you know, set of destinations to choose from? Um, how long are people waiting in the queue? Um, you know, may, maybe there's someone waiting in the queue that uh, is waiting there for, for like a good 10 minutes or, or even more. So the minute you start caring a bit more about service, you know, uh, level and quality, definitely reporting is, is one thing that you, you really want to make sure, you know, that you have eyes on what's going on on that way into your, to your company. Now, obviously, once you get that reporting, uh, presumably and hopefully you want to start acting upon the data that you get there, right? So, I mean, let's say you 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 do analyze your, your you know, IVR, uh, the behavior of your callers in the IVR, and you're, you're recognizing, um, you know, some kind of bottleneck uh, in that IVR. What can you do about it? Can you create an additional level in the IVR? Can you um, uh, maybe do a data dip? that can automate a certain process in the IVR, um, you know, so, so things like that, you know, having eyes on what's going on and then acting on it 
Uh, that's kind of where the team's native functionality end and where you start getting, you know, um, uh, start needing to look at, at, you know, other contact center solutions that are out there that can hopefully, you know, leverage what you already got going with Microsoft Teams to just, you know, provide uh, a higher quality uh, service experience. Uh, lastly, I would say uh, just another area where, where the native Teams capabilities are somewhat limited is, is the multi-site management. Because on Microsoft Teams, your entire company, and especially if it's a global company, uh, the entire company is residing on the same single you know, global Teams tenant. And this means that, for example, the, um, you know, the, the New York IVR can be uh, monitored or even worse can be uh, managed by, let's say, uh, some IT admin in, in the LA branch, for example. Uh, something that we know from our conversations with IT managers out there um, that's a bit risky, right? So when you want to start separating management between sites, that's also another area where the kind of like the native teams functionality typically end and you need to start looking at solutions that are, you know, hopefully let's say multi-tenant solutions that allow you to split um, reporting and, 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 and configuration and management of those uh, service workflows on a, on a per site level. Okay, so it seems pretty clear where the Microsoft Teams contact center capabilities end beyond what's natively built in there. And then there seems to be kind of this in-between space um, until you get to the larger CCAS vendors who are offering um, almost everything in the bag when it comes to the contact center. So what do you think someone should look for when they're looking for something more in between that? Yeah, so, I mean, contact center, the contact center industry in general and, and CCAS solutions, you know, cloud contact center solutions have been around for quite a while. And typically, you know, the, 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 the popular names, you know, if you ask the average, you know, IT person, customer experience manager and so on, you know, what are the popular brands in this industry? You're gonna, you're going to hear names like, you know, Genesis, Nice in Contact, Cisco, and so on. Um, the way that I like to refer to these platforms for the sake of this context is premium contact center solutions. Uh, why do I call them premium? Simply because those are very capable platforms for what we find when we talk with our customers, uh, those platforms are, are almost you know, too capable for what, for what customers really need. So um, you know, if you go to the average customer that's using a Genesis, in many, many cases, you're going to find that they're using maybe 50% of, of the Genesis or the NICE or the Cisco feature set. And I'm saying 50% to be kind of gentle, right? Um, most companies don't really need that entire set of features and, 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 you know, can also save up on, on associated costs that come, uh, with this, you know, giant feature set. The way that I talk about it with customers, I, I say, you know, that to, to, to bring something like a Genesis, for example, to your IT help desk, it's, it's almost like driving a Lamborghini to your supermarket. It's, it's just doesn't make sense. It's. In many cases, it's an overkill. Um, and, you know, these days, it it's just makes much more sense um, to kind of look to supercharge your, your Microsoft Teams with contact center functionalities that complete, you know, the feature set that you're really after rather than going for a separate, you know, and, and a very capable, not to say too capable contact center platform that resides, you know, completely separate and detached from, from, you know, a unified communication platform like, like Microsoft Teams. So you identified this pretty large gap in the mid-tier contact center um, vendors and, and what can be offered to someone who does not need a large-scale vendor but needs more than just Microsoft Teams. Um, obviously, this plays into also the agent and how they use the software. So um, 
you know, do you see any trends going on in in agent needs as well related to Microsoft Teams and, and a CCAS? You know, one of the biggest trends nowadays is just the, the consolidation or convergence between unified communications and, and, and contact center. Basically, the idea is that the more customer experience technology become, uh, becomes commoditized, the more, uh, the, the more opportunity uh, that we have as companies to leverage that, those you know, great modern customer experience technologies and bring it not only to the main service desk, but literally to any uh, internal desks, desk in the company. So uh, the idea is that you know, when, when, you have some, when you have a contact center that can tap on and, and leverage something like Microsoft Teams, and if, if any user in the company has Teams, it also means that any user in the company can start providing modern service with a contact center solution that, that leverages uh, Teams. So if you think about the IT help desk, the HR desk, um, sales teams, even security teams and so on, these are all people that end of the day, uh, uh, you know, get a lot of calls throughout the day and end of the day provide service in that sense, right? Um, so with the idea with, with the contact center that can leverage something like Teams is to not only provide the contact center capabilities to you know something like the main service desk, but to also kind of spread it okay throughout the company and provide you know provide those modern customer experience capabilities to to those kind of internal business lines as well. Um, you know there are many examples to um, how these departments can benefit from a modern customer experience technology. Um, you know imagine a sales team that gets a call from a prospect after hours. Definitely, they do not want to miss that call, right? Um, imagine a call from a very a, attractive, sought-after HR candidate. Um, maybe we want to consider that as a VIP caller and steer it to you know, a senior HR manager's mobile device and so on. So there, there are many um, um, kind of customer experience capabilities that we can now also provide to the EX world, to the employee experience world, and just, you know, gear them up, equip them with, with more than set of capabilities that end of the day allow them to provide a much better service. When we think about it from the IT standpoint, it also, you know, resonates with that because it, from an IT perspective, it means when you have a contact center solution that leverages teams, Essentially, it means, first of all, security-wise and media quality-wise, you do not need to rely on two separate vendors, meaning like Microsoft and, and a contact center vendor on the other side. You're basing your contact center technology on Microsoft Teams. That means that you know, your contact center calls are Microsoft-grade media quality, Microsoft-grade security, and so on. Um, and it also means that you know with the same kind of... Um, credentials, cross-company management, and so on. You do not need to deal with another application. You're dealing with Teams Voices, the infrastructure that you already invested a lot of, probably invested a lot of effort, you know, to get up and running and, you know, make sure that, you know, everybody gets, gets a good experience around it. And then you just leverage that to, you know, take it, uh, you know, a, a step up and, and you know, allow your users to just provide much better service using that same that same platform. Yeah, absolutely. It's almost as if you're pulling levers. You have one lever, uh, which is Microsoft Teams, and you can just pull that lever a little bit more to continue to get more um, out of it, opposed to pulling another lever and bring in an additional contact center to then get integrated, to then teach your team how to use, to ramp up, um, and, you know, using that Microsoft Teams lever can grow and expand in a in a tool that your employees already know how to use. Exactly, it's all about efficiency. I mean, if I was to summarize it real quick, it's it's all about being more efficient and and keeping things simple, right? When when we keep things simple and we use, you know, we we are not you know tempted to to add new elements to to our architecture to our solution. 
It just means that we probably provide a much more stable uh, service. And, and also, like you said, a service that users already know and you know can work with. So yeah, definitely. All right, Giddy. So I wanted to get your perspective on this. You know, What is one piece of advice that you would give to someone considering Microsoft Teams as their contact center? So I would say multiple advice. Um, definitely one thing that we see a lot is um, typically there's not enough dialogue between IT and customer experience managers. So one advice that I definitely have is uh, just encourage, you know, IT folks out there and, uh, and customer experience managers that are listening to this to just talk, you know, I, I have more dialogue between IT, the IT side and the customer experience side. Um, from, from what we see in the market, the more dialogue there is, the more IT take time and to learn about the, the needs of, of, of customer experience managers, the more likely it is to come up with the right solution that really fits, you know, the set of requirements uh, that the organization has. Another piece of advice is, and I think we, we already covered it a bit before, but definitely do not stop at your main service desk. Go talk to your IT help desk. Go talk to your HR desk. Talk with your sales team. Um, talk with your security team. You will find that these people have a lot of necessities around, maybe they don't even know it's called customer experience, right? But they will tell you, Oh yeah, I definitely need a solution that helps me, you know, dealing with a call after hours. I definitely need, definitely need a solution that can escalate a call to someone's mobile on my team. Or uh, I would definitely uh, benefit from having, you know, reports on who is calling my sales team at, at any given day. Um, so definitely don't stop at your main service desk. Uh, go to, to those other internal business lines and, and you know, see what, what their necessities are as well. Um, another advice is, like we said, you know, with keeping efficiency in mind, um, just, you know, tr always try to think how much more can you achieve with what you already got? Um, kind of squeeze the lemon in that sense because, you know, we already talked in the beginning how powerful Microsoft Teams is and, you know, how powerful this entire ecosystem is. Uh, so there's no need, again, to, to go for, um, you know, a fragmented, multi-element uh, architecture. There's a lot that you can achieve with what you already have. Um, and the last thing, you know, is, is there, there, there's, there are a lot of solutions out there, um, you know, a lot of different sizes of solutions in terms of the feature set and the cost. Uh, pick the one that's right for you in terms of the balance between the feature set and the cost and how it's serving your, your formal and your informal agents. I love your analogy to, you know, squeezing the lemon, using what you already have built in and spent a lot of investment in money and time like Microsoft Teams, squeezing that lemon, getting the most out of it, seeing how it fits in with your other internal business lines kind of building that collaboration that then sets the tone for if a agent is on a call and say it needs to be escalated to someone who's more of a product expert, they can easily shift that call over to someone on the product team and see their availability on Teams, um, see that you know they're not in a meeting, they can take a call right now and right. they can be brought onto the call and answer that question directly from the customer, from their expert opinion, um, obviously knowing the product really well. Um, I think those are some great pieces of advice, especially when you're looking for, especially a tool like Microsoft Teams for a contact center. Awesome, Giddy. So as we transition into 2023, I wanted to maybe get some of your final comments or, or advice for this year. Right. So, I mean, 23 has already started and it already proves to be uh, a pretty challenging year uh, in the industry. We're seeing, you know, tech companies with their with their layoffs uh, on the one hand. So definitely, you know, companies out there have less to work with this year. However, the demand for for high level quality service 
um, always increases, right? That's not going to decrease uh, uh, in, pa in, in parallel to the decrease of resources. Um, and so 23 is going to be a challenge in, you know, being able to continue make a progress um, with, you know, with the fewer resource resources that you have uh, in your company today. Um, so I guess my advice in that sense would be definitely do not freeze any progression that you have planned for anything in the customer experience or, or employee experience field, because guess what? Your customers, your employees, your users are expecting, you know, higher and higher quality of service as time uh, go by. Uh, probably the right way to deal with it is to just, you know, be very aware of, you know, we, what are the solutions that you're going for? Are these solutions, you know, do a good job at, at catering your immediate needs? Uh, and, and, you know, maybe there's some extra fat uh, in, in premium solutions that you could do without uh, in the 2023 mode. And uh, let's call it, uh, yeah, and just, just be very aware of, of, about what you choose. Make sure that it gives, you know, gives you just what you need. And as a result, you know, uh, allowing you to invest what you need to invest and not, not more than that. The good news in that sense, and, you know, to end this session on a, on a positive note, I would say, you know, the, the, the great thing in today's world is that the tech world today is no longer a world of a few, okay? There are a lot of solutions out there to choose from when it comes to customer experience, conversational AI. There are so many vendors out there. It's, it's no longer a world of, of just a handful of giants. Uh, there's a lot of vendors out there, each with its own focus and, and flavor. Um, so for... For people who are, you know, thorough enough with their research and open their eyes on what is really going on in the market, uh, there there are a lot of options to look at. Uh, so that's 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 great. You know, uh, that's at least uh, you know one uh, you know bright thing to to uh, to consider. Uh, you know, entering twenty twenty three. Okay, that about wraps us up uh, for this session of Always on CX and EX. Giddy. Thank you very much for joining us for this session. Um, these will be regularly occurring uh, sessions. We have a lot more to come uh, in 2023, a vast um, topic uh, that we have listed out with many different speakers. Uh, so we hope that you join us for the next one. Thank you, Josh. And uh, yeah, definitely staying tuned for everything that's coming up with customer experience, employee experience, and everything in between. Thank you.